And if you notice, the bulletin was a little bit of change. We're not having a sort of a prelude time today, but uh, I just like to change things up because I like to change things up. So if the first two songs we're going to sing has to do with His great name, isn't it great that we know there is only one great name, and that's the name of Jesus. So if you can stand this morning, you stand. If you need to sit, you sit. Your great name first, and then what a beautiful name. Uh, And then we'll go into announcements after that.
announcements this morning. Uh, I just said, I didn't know that there was going to be information out there, but March the 21st is the banquet. Uh, it's a Thursday usually. Uh, if you want to sign up to, to uh, provide some food, uh, it's out there. If you want to work, you can see Michelle uh, and get uh, connected with coming to do that on March the 21st. If you're serving on a team or want to serve on a team, see me after church right here on this side, and then we're going to divide up into the different teams, and I will give you instructions. It should take no longer than five minutes. So if you want to serve on the finance team, if you want to serve on the uh, the praise team, if you want to serve on the uh, house and grounds team or missions team, or we may even create a team, who knows. But if you want to serve... Come see me after after church this morning, and we'll be glad to do that. I've had people ask me about helping run the sound system from time to time when Peter's not here, which is very rare. Uh, but if you want to do that, you connect with Peter. He'll be glad to set up a time that's convenient for him. Usually it's Wednesdays, and uh, so you want to see Peter, sign up for a time to come, and he'll show you how to operate the sound system in case he's not here. And because I tried it last time and it did not work. So uh, that's not my thing. So if, if that's your thing, see Peter and set up a time to do that. Um, uh, I don't know if it's okay if I announce what's happening Wednesday. Okay. Uh, Larry, uh, Larry Lance, you remember Larry, right? Well, uh, after he passed away, the ground was not suitable for uh, a service, a graveside service. That's happening this Wednesday. So be in prayer for for uh, Denise and for the family and for all that to go accordingly to how God has planned it to go. And so just be in prayer. It's 2 o'clock on Wednesday uh, at Medicine Creek uh, Cemetery. Uh, so be in prayer for that, uh, that God would be honored and glorified and uh, will... Uh, Get that last little bit of information taken care of, and uh, God will be glorified. Any other announcements that we need to make today? If not, it's time for our ushers to come forward.
Have your Bibles with this morning. I'd ask you to turn to Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. I thought I would change it up again a little bit and have scripture reference and then a song and then bring the message this morning. But you can be reflecting and meditating on God's word this morning. It says in the New King James Version, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint, but happy is he who keeps the law. And then in the King James, one you're probably more familiar with, with this uh, verse, is where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. i 
One of my, uh, I have a lot of songs I love, but that's one I like to uh, listen to often because it reminds me that I shouldn't get to the point in my life where that's where I have to do is run to the Father. I should be doing that every day. Uh, Because when you run to the Father every day and you get in His Word and you begin to meditate upon His Word, it seems like your life has a little bit more balance. I don't know about you, but sometimes I look at my life like an EKG. Up, down, up, down. And a really good heart rate is pretty steady. And so think about that. When we run to the Father, is it because we have missed Him and we desperately need Him and we need to run to the Father or is it because we know that's where we need to go every day? Um, That's what that song spoke to me this morning is... I don't need to wait till there's an emergency. I don't need to wait for my heart's in trouble. I don't need to wait for anything. I just need to run to the Father every day. Uh, if you have your Bibles again, you can turn back to that passage in Proverbs twenty nine eighteen. And the question this morning is, where does God-given vision come from? If you were here last Sunday or you watched online, the question was about Nehemiah's God-given vision. And if you know the story of Nehemiah, he was in exile uh, and he had a burden from God to go back to Jerusalem and see what was going on. And he got permission from the king. He traveled many, many, many miles and with the army that the king sent with all the provisions he needed, everything he needed to do what he needed to do. And then he got back and what was the first thing that Nehemiah did. He saw the city and he wept. And he spent time in prayer before he assumed the task. The task was to rebuild the wall and rehang the gates that were burned, right? Isn't that the story? And so, and when he did that, opposition came. When you're doing what God has called you to do and called us to do, opposition is going to come, sometimes from within the church. Sometimes stuff that doesn't really mean anything is really the reason that stuff goes crazy because we get caught up in the wrong thing. So so where does God-given vision come from? So this passage came to me, and you've heard it before, where there is no vision, people perish. So I think we're looking to where we are and where we want to go according to God's given vision. That's the reason we're having uh, a meeting here this morning. I, I believe, and, and I, I have uh, confessed this, and um, I don't feel like I've done a good job, of, uh, and it's not a job. I don't believe I've done what God's called me to do to lead this church to a vision where we all go together. Does that make sense? And when I say all together, we have different teams in different situations. But what I want to see is us working together to glorify God. And that's what the the message is going to be about this morning. So where are we going? What are we looking for? What's the vision for our church? And do we understand where our current circumstances are? And what can the future look like? Well, I did some 
research, and I, I found a message by a guy named Rodney Johnson Sr., and he was basically listing everything that without vision perishes. And, I, you know, if we think about people, that's usually what you hear, without vision people perish. And I got to, what he began to write was just a, literally an unlimited list. And I think about myself and think about you. And what do you think of when you think of without vision things perish? Well, first of all, families. I mean, it's not in any particular order, but if we look at our world today, what is the one thing that is, is not right in, in our world? That's families. We have dysfunctional families. We have uh, separated families. We have uh, families as one that perish when there's no vision because we don't see self. If we don't have a vision of where God has called us to, we perish. Communities, the church, souls. Uh, when's the last time you've heard of a movement of God to where people are turning their lives over to Christ? Where, where, when's the last time you've heard of a movement where people are just realizing that they're lost and they need a Savior and Jesus is the answer? When's the last time you heard of a movement of people getting saved without hesitation? Because there's no vision. <laughs> I'll get into some of that, but those are the kind of things you can just list anything you want to list under the idea of without a revelation, without a vision, things perish. If you if you old as I am, and not many of you are, in fact I may be the oldest one in the room. That's okay. But I can remember when the church was the foundation in every community. I remember when people looked to the church for the answers. If there was if there was grief in the community, they went to the church. And when there was a need in the community, they went to the church. When there was problems, they went to the church. And somehow we sort of let go of that responsibility of being that group of people who took care of things when things needed to happen. So as we try to understand what this means to me, to you, and our church, we first must examine ourselves to see where we are. I read a Japanese proverb that said this, Vision without action is a daydream. Action without vision is a nightmare. And I see that all over the place. I see churches who are so caught up in stuff, and I'm not saying this church is, I'm just saying we, we have to examine to make sure we're not doing some of these things, that we do stuff just to say we've done stuff. You ever thought about that? That sometimes we go, well, we got to do something, so let's do something. Even if it means nothing, we said we did something. That was a lot of words, but it says the same thing. Sometimes we do stuff just to look busy. I don't want to be busier than I am, <laughs> but I don't want to do stuff just to do stuff. You know, the definition of sanity is doing the same thing you've always done, expecting something different to happen. We don't need to be caught in either one of those. We need to be caught in a God-sized vision for a reason. It's not so more people will come, and we do want more people to come. It's not so we can do more things, because we do things. Um, it's not so we can be recognized or anything like that. But it is to glorify God. That is the purpose of us individually and cooperatively as a church, is to glorify God. That's why he created you and I. He created us to glorify him. Now, most of you know I travel quite a bit, and I go in churches all over the place. And I, from, uh, well, I won't say I've been in every state, but close. And sometimes I see the same thing. Is how can we get recognized? How can that preacher be, be recognized in the community as, oh, he's the, he's the cool guy, or he's the, he's the great orator, he's this or that, uh, or, you know, that church up on the hill, north of, north of town, or, uh, no, it's nothing about any of that. But sometimes that's where we are. <laughs> we want to make it about us. Instead of about him. 
And, and I find that, that I've done that before. It's great to be pat on the back sometimes. I mean, it, it doesn't feel good when somebody sort of acknowledges you, that you've done something either at work or, or, or your family or somebody says, hey, you did a good job. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if that's the focus, if that's the vision to get recognized for what we're doing, we just need to exit, lock the door, give the key to somebody else. That's not what we're going to be about. We're going to be about glorifying God because it is what he's called us to do. And that's the reason we need a God-given, God-sized vision because of that. Because we need to glorify the Father. Take me out of the picture. You've heard me say this a hundred times. Empty me of me and fill me with you. So he gets the glory, and it's not about me. It's not about Capitol Heights Baptist Church. It's not about anybody here. It's not about any great sermon. It's not about any great activity. It's about glorifying God. Now, do we have activities that can glorify God? Absolutely. We have a thing called the governor's grocery. If you're in the loop, it brings glory to God. But if we're not careful... It'll be what we did, not what he's doing. Same thing with this banquet. It's, it's a great thing, and it brings glory to God. I, I can tell you, I, I've been a part of it for three years, two years when we basically fill plates and send them out the door. Last year, we actually got to do it in person, which was pretty cool. And we'll get to do it in person again this year. But if it's not about feeding people for God's glory... Not for our glory. That's the right thing. So I think we have to begin to look at what is our intentions? What is our reason behind? What do we want to do that brings glory to God? I begin to look at the words and either perish or revelation, either one's pretty much the same. It says to cast off, lack of restraint. For people to run wild. Anybody looked at a, a news feed on your phone lately or checked the newspaper or listened to some news show? It really doesn't matter. That's us. That's the world. I, I talked to my daughter in Africa on Friday. I think they feel more safe in Africa after a coup by the military than they would feel here in America. Isn't that crazy? That, that we live in a world <laughs> that where somebody had a military coup feels more safe than they do here. Now, if you don't believe this, trust me, it's the truth. South Dakota is not that isolated place in the world where nothing really happens because there's a lot of stuff happens in South Dakota that you're not even probably aware of. Do you know one of the meth capitals of this part of the world is in South Dakota? I don't know if you knew that or not, but it is. All you have to do is talk to the right people, and they'll tell you, if you want to get meth, we can tell you where to go. We can tell you where you can get all you want in South Dakota. So we need to be about helping people have a vision for God. It, it means we need some things to do because our world is running wild. So what do we need to do? Well, this is not in any particular order, but I believe it's some minimal things that we can do as a church. Is we can pray. Might not be able to do anything else, but everybody in this room can pray. Now, what does prayer look like? Well, Buck, I, I don't really know how to pray. Well, if you can talk, you can pray. But here's the difference. And this is one thing God's been speaking to me lately, is prayer is communication, right? It's pretty simple, communication to God. I think sometimes I can't speak for you. Maybe you've got this all figured out. I just don't have it figured out yet. Is I love to tell God all the things that I want him to do. I want him to grow the church. I do. I want people to get saved. I do. 
I, I, I want things to happen. I want people to be healed. I want people to not have pain. I, don't, I want people not to have financial trouble. I, I want people to have a good, abundant life. And then I say, Amen. I tell him all the stuff. I tell him all the people I'm praying for. But I don't do the one thing well that I should. And that's listen. You ever thought about that? I promise you this. I, I, there's not many things I can guarantee in this world. But I can guarantee you this. God has more to say to me than I'll ever have to say to him. You know why? Because he's the creator. He already knows me. The Bible says, and some of the songs say, even before I took my first breath, he knew me. So what he has to say to me is way more important than what I have to say to him. But guess what? He's that kind of God. He wants to listen to me. He wants to hear my cry. He wants to hear my plea. He wants to hear my petition before him. So we need to pray. But we also need to listen. We also need to search the Word of God. You've heard me say this before. It's the living, breathing Word of God. He breathed His very life into those words. Not, not the words on a piece of paper. But into His Word. It's His breath, His life, speaking to you and I. It's your owner's manual. It is the actual thing that you can, any problem you're facing in this world today, I promise you, if you search the Word, there's a solution for you. God always gives promises, and I know people who quote God's promises all the time. But usually with God's promise, there is a requirement. There is something we're supposed to do on our part. God says, I will do this for you, but hey, Buck... Wake up. You need to do this. And so it's, it's all together. So search the Word of God for the answers for that God-given vision that He's going to call us all to be part of. Also, we need to share the Word of God. Do you know the person that you might meet this afternoon or tomorrow or the person you work with or the person that's your neighbor or the person who's your friend or even yet this morning, the person sitting beside you. Have you ever asked them this question? Do you know Jesus? Do, do you not just know about Jesus, but do you know Jesus? Have you asked that question of your family lately? Ha, have you sort of checked your own self and say, where are you in your relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? There are many things that we can do. However, if we're not on the same page of glorifying God, we're in trouble. We're just a group of people who meet and do some singing and take up an offering and have somebody stand up here and speak. If we're not all on the same page, we're not doing what God's called us to do. Does that mean it's going to be easy? <laughs> You've heard me say this before. Pastoring would be real easy if I didn't have to deal with people. But that goes for me too. Being a child of God would be easy if I didn't have to go through any of the difficulties, if I hadn't had to do any of the work, if I didn't have to spend time with God and study His Word. Life would be easy. We need to be on the same page. We need to be together in one body, one mind, one spirit. The scriptures talk about that, that we're supposed to be together doing the work of the Father to glorify Him. So we need to evaluate some things. Where, where are we and where are we going? Again, I've said things that you might find contradictory, but they're really not. We are supposed to grow a church. God, God says He will do that if we're together, right? If we have the right reason and the right purpose and the right mindset, God will add people to our midst. He will do that out there as well. 
Not everybody. You may disagree with me, and that's okay. I've been disagreed with before. But God doesn't want everybody to come here. God has other places that he needs his people to be active for him. And that's okay. If we only run 10 people or 20 people or 100, the numbers really don't matter if we're on mission with God. And what does on mission look like? Well, one, gathering together. That's part of the mission. Two, going out is part of the mission. Going abroad, the, the scripture says the you know Samaria, Judea, and to other parts of the world. Some we do by how we give, some how we send. Uh, if we're not living sent, we're not living according to God's plan. Read the Bible. I'm telling you, it's got a whole bunch of stuff in there you probably had not figured out yet. It tells you what you need to know. Go back to the very beginning. Did everybody just stay at one place? When they gathered, did they just go to church every Sunday and have a big time? Did they always have a fellowship meal and sing Kumbaya? And No. When people are on mission for God, they lived sent, meaning they were willing to go wherever God said to go. Now, am I telling you that we need everybody to go out here? No. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we need to understand that at some point, God will call people out of here. Maybe short term. Maybe going to Jamaica. Maybe going to Africa. Maybe going to South America. Maybe, maybe going to India. Maybe going to the Ukraine. Maybe going somewhere. But if we have a heart for God, He's going to send us where we need to go. And how we need to be involved as a, as a church. So we need to pray, search the Word of God, share the Word of God. Be it one body, one mind, one spirit. And we must completely give ourselves to God. If we're not willing to do that, it's hard to have a vision of God. If we're not willing to let go of all the stuff, I'm telling you, if you don't have stuff in your life, you, we might want to check your pulse because you may be already dead. Because all God's people have got problems, right? Anybody here without a problem? Don't think so. But here's how we can do this together. We can love one another. We can pray for one another. If we have a problem, we can bring that up, get it resolved, because the devil loves when people have problems with one another and with the church and with situations and, and teams and committees and we're not willing to say, I have a problem. <laughs> the devil will take that and he will destroy churches. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. One body, one mind, one spirit, giving ourselves completely to God. So the question is, there's several questions. Do we want to be a group of believers that glorify God? If the answer to that is yes, then there's some things we need to do. <laughs> we need to start praying as a church, not just, if you want to, I can pick a time of day, and you can, since there's two times in a day, that's the same actually. Uh, my wife didn't know that. My wife thought there was only one five o'clock. And that was in the afternoon. There was no 5 o'clock in the morning, according to her. But we can set up a time. You know, there's all kind of things to remind us when to pray, like 10.12 or 10.15 or 9 o'clock. The times don't matter, but we can do that. But let's pray together. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray for those that have not yet come. Let's pray for those who are lost without Jesus. Let us pray that God would do only what God can do. Because we can't do it apart from Him. If you think we can, there is no, I promise you, there is no leadership in the world that can do what God can do. We can't plan a revival, but we can pray for a revival. We can't lead people to Christ without Christ going first. Make sense? 
if it's without Christ, without God, without the power of the Holy Spirit, we're just wasting time. Let's pray for one another. Let's study God's Word. Let's pray for that God-given vision, that maybe that one unique thing that separates us that God would call us to do. What is that? I have no idea yet. But I know that's what he's called me to do is to be praying for that God-given vision that Capitol Heights Baptist Church in Pierce, South Dakota would be the one place in the world where may be no other that works together to glorify him. So I have a question for you this morning. Do you want to completely give yourselves to God? Do you want to see what God can do? Let's do this together. If you're here this morning and... And you're without Christ, if you know about Him but you don't know Him, uh, come this morning. We'll be glad to show you in God's Word how you can invite Christ into your life. It's pretty simple. Is you have to first surrender your life, understand that He died for you. He was buried. He rose again. He sits at the right hand of the Father on your behalf. All you got to do is accept. Maybe here this morning you want to be part of our Our little family we call Capitol Heights Baptist Church. There's information out on the tables out there how you can be a member of this church and what the requirements are, if you want to call it that, uh, to be part of this congregation. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you need, but God does. And he is more than ready this morning to meet you where you are. Our hymn of invitation, stand, stand, you need to sit, sit, is trust and obey. For there's no other way. Right? Stand with us as we sing. Just remember, if you want to be involved in the workings of the church, uh, come down here. We'll take about five minutes to sort of give some instructions. Um, And if you don't have time to stay today, see me sometime uh, in the next week or email me or text me and say, Buck, I'd really like to be involved in whatever that part is. And we will see what we can do to make that happen. Uh, Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for loving us in spite of us. Thank you that you had a plan even from before we understood the plan for a Savior, for Jesus, that he would come, he would live, he would sacrifice his life, shed his blood for the remission of our sins so that we too may spend eternity with you. Father, I just pray for every person here, every person, whatever need they may have, Whatever that looks like, Lord, according to your grace and mercy, Lord, that you would bless them, you would use them, and Lord, even yet today, may they see your power in ways they've not ever seen it before. May they feel your presence like they've never felt it before. May they 
understand that there's a love that maybe they can't comprehend. Like sometimes I have trouble understanding your love for me because you know me. And yet you love me. And Lord, I just pray for every person here as they leave here today that they know they've had an encounter with you. And Lord, that you would just bless and use us as a body of believers, not only to to reach the people we know, but people we don't know, our city, our state, our country, this world, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ. Help us not only to be mission-minded, but to be on mission with you. And Lord, we'll just give you praise in all things. In Jesus' name, amen.